Hello, today we'll be going over a demo of the Squareworks Consulting three-way match bundle. We're going to go through the process of receiving this purchase order and then generating bills. As we're generating the receipts and the bills, you're gonna see that validation is run in real time to flag any potential issues with the bill or receipt. Let's start by receiving the purchase order. We're gonna be receiving two items on this receipt, we have a printer, which is an inventory item, and check paper. Let's start by choosing a location for our inventory item, the printer. And let's say the rate that we actually received this at was actually $700 instead of $600. And when I press save, you're gonna see that it's going to run through a match validation in real time, actually before the receipt is saved. And you're seeing here that it's flagging the item line number one, because the rate differs from the purchase order. If I hover over this help icon, it actually shows me what the rate is compared to on the purchase order compared to the receipt. If this is expected and there's a reason why this is okay, you can enter a reason here. If not, you can actually press cancel, make a correction to the rate and press save. All right, so that passed validation and it saved successfully. Now that we have uh, received the inventory, uh, let's go ahead and create a bill from this purchase order. So we're gonna click the bill button. All right, and so the, the same type of validation is gonna run when we try to save this bill. Uh, so for instance, if the invoice that came in from the vendor was actually for quantity two, but we've already only received one. And let's say the quantity of the check paper was uh, 20. And let's try to save this. So it's gonna run the same type of validation, except this time you see a lot of errors. Uh, so it's flagging both line one and two as having issues. And for each of these, you can see the details. So for line one, it's saying the quantity exceeds the purchase order. If I hover over this, I can see that I'm trying to create a bill for quantity two, yet the purchase order is only for quantity one. And same for the receipt. So it's also gonna compare not only this bill to the purchase order, but also to the receipt. So if I hover, hover over here, we're gonna see that we actually received only one, yet we're trying to bill two. So assuming this was a mistake, you, again, you can press cancel. Let's change the quantity back to one. And for the check paper, uh, let's leave it quantity 11. So we actually are gonna bill more than we actually received. So let's save this. It's gonna run the validation again. It's gonna flag line two as ha still having issues, but since this is expected, this is okay. Um, you'll see here the, the amount is being flagged as an issue, the quantity is being flagged as an issue, and also the entire, the, the sum of this bill compared to the purchase order is also too high. It doesn't meet thresholds. Uh, but this is okay, so let's put in a reason. Uh, I'm just gonna write okay for now and press save with errors. Once the bill's been saved, you're gonna see there's a three-way match errors tab that's been added. If you click on here, it's gonna have a copy of all of the errors that were flagged when you tried to save the record. And we're also gonna notice that this is currently pending approval. So this is working very closely with our approval workflow automation solution to handle very complex approval needs. When I press submit, it's going to route through two levels of approval. And I have it set up so that if this vendor bill is flagged as having three-way match validation errors, it should route through, through an employee first for approval. Once that employee approves, this bill is going to route through the CFO for a second level approval. This is fully configurable through our approval workflow automation bundle. Um, so let's press submit. It's now pending approval. And if I go to this approval history tab at the bottom, this is part of our approval workflow automation solution, which comes packaged with 3 way match validation.
we're going to see Bernardo is currently pending approval. And the first approval step I have set up is three-way match approval. So because this bill was flagged as having a three-way match error, we're going to require this first approval step be required. Bernardo just received an email. Anytime approval requests go out, emails are sent to the approver. Here's a copy of an, an approval email. And on this email, you're gonna see all the details from the bill and additional information at the top. Everything here is configurable in, within our solution. Uh, the nice thing about this solution is Bernardo can actually approve this directly via email. If he didn't have access to NetSuite, he can do this directly in email. He can also click these links at the top to navigate back to NetSuite to approve via the NetSuite user interface. When you click approve here, it opens up a second email message where you can leave comments optionally and then press send to complete the approval process. Let's go back into NetSuite and actually approve uh, directly in NetSuite. Because I'm not logged in as Bernardo right now, I don't see an approve or reject button at the top. However, I am logged in as a, a super approver role. So our solution allows one or multiple roles to act as super approvers, and that gives you extra permissions when viewing bills. So there's a super approved button at the top, which could mark this bill as fully approved, bypassing all approval steps. Or as a super approver, I can go down to the approval history tab, and there's a change link that appears as a super approver. When I click on the change link, it opens up a window where I can select a different approver to approve on behalf of Bernardo. So let's say I just want to approve this myself to bypass step number one. So I can put in my name and press save. Oh, I also need to put in a reason for why I'm making this change. I'll just put in test and we'll save. If I go back to the approval history tab, we're gonna see the original request to Bernardo has been canceled and by who and what time and the comments that I left in the change approver page. You're gonna see a second row has been added. Now both Bernardo and myself are required. Um, however, any one of us can approve. So the first, basically the first one to approve is going to complete this first approval step. Uh, this can be set up to require both but based off of the settings, any of us, Bernardo or myself, are required. Since I'm listed here, I now have approve and reject buttons showing at the top. If I click approve, it's gonna give me an option to leave optional comments. And the same works for a reject. I also can leave a rejection reason. Let's approve. I'll just put in a comment. And since I'm approving on behalf of Bernardo, my approval is going to complete that first step and it's gonna move on to the next step of the approval process, which is the CFO approval process. You're gonna see here that uh, we have actually role-based approval set up. So anyone with the CFO role who logs into NetSuite will see approve and reject buttons at the top in the same way I saw them when I was an approver. If I want, I could change this. To, buy, to change this to a different role or a different employee to act on behalf of the CFO role. But since I'm logged in as a super approve, I can actually push a super approve button to bypass this final approval step. I just wanna highlight this isn't a, a normal thing that would happen. The super approve process is more of an exception process if someone's out of office or there's a reason why this bill needs to be pushed through quickly. Let's press super approve. I can leave a comment and I can press OK. This has been fully approved at this point and can be used to make payment. On the approval history tab, you're gonna see that the request to the CFO role has been canceled by who and what time and comments that were, that were left. And then we finally have a final row added saying that I super approved this transaction and then the date and time that was done. The three match validation errors are still listed. These are maintained over time. And finally, let's just talk about the rules that were used to set up these validations. 
our Thrive Match bundle has multiple settings you can use to control how it functions. This is a settings page for Thrive Match. Uh, you can define thresholds at both the line level and also the total level, both percentage based and amount based. In addition to that, you have controls to actually prevent employees from saving transactions such as bills or receipts if there are any validation errors. Or you can set it up to allow employees to still save, yet they can leave a comment as to what is, what is wrong. Also, you'll see here there are these two fields called excluded non-PO items and excluded non-PO expenses. Sometimes when bills are entered, there are items that are added that aren't actually related to the purchase order, such as tax items. Our solution can be set up to all automatically flag the bills if there are additional lines added that aren't, at, that aren't associated to a purchase order. However, if there are known items that are added often and it's not an exception, you can identify them here in this excluded non-PO item section. So for instance, I've excluded the tax item. So it won't throw an issue, uh, an error, if I add a tax item to my bill and try to save the bill. And that is it. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to uh, Squareworks Consulting and we can uh, set up a demo or give you uh, more information about our solution. Thank you, bye-bye.